friends today we are going to talk about the differences between spoken language and the written language let's uh, begin with some introduction you know that uh, india has uh, so many languages uh, about uh, 400 or so and they are spoken in various states of india some are included in the eighth schedule 22 languages and some are not included in eighth schedule they are called non scheduled languages and the number of non scheduled languages including three foreign languages arabic persian pashto we have 100 languages which are spoken by less than 10000 persons each and you know that uh, all languages are not always written some languages still remain unwritten for example some tribal and minor languages which are spoken by fewer than say uh, 400 500 or uh, say a thousand uh, uh, number of speakers for example tarao in manipur we have uh, dhimal in uh, west bengal they are spoken by fewer number of people and they are not written that means they don't have a script to write we also know that speech is primary and writing is secondary why we say that because we know that the moment a child is born and she is uh, after, say about 8 uh, uh, months old or 12 months old then she starts acquiring a language and when she acquires a language she first speaks it she doesn't start writing and reading immediately so all languages are spoken with the exception of dead languages such as latin which is only uh, existing in written form and only a subset of these languages are written it can be said that spoken language is the natural or the primary medium of human language for the following reasons and the reasons are speech is prior to writing as i said that first we acquire language spoken language and then we learn to read and write the writing system is always invented by its users to record speech speech plays a greater role than writing in the amount of information conveyed and you must be aware we know that most of the time we convey messages we communicate in oral language spoken language we don't write each and everything speech is always the way in which every native speaker acquires her mother tongue speech is oral thus making it possible to use intonation to emphasize words or phrases and express emotion if you are familiar with some of the tibeto burman languages spoken in manipur nagaland mizoram and other northeastern states you must have heard people using tone tone exists at the level of word the differentiate meaning in word if you raise your pitch you get one meaning if you lower your pitch you get another meaning for example in manipuri there is a word u so if you say u then it means one thing if you say u it means another thing so one is blood one meaning and the other meaning is the thatch with which you cover your house writing has punctuation but it can express only a small proportion of the features that intonation has so for example if you are speaking hindi uh, say we can uh, say the same sentence with different intonation pattern so we can say acha hai ye khana acha hai acha khana acha tha so same word acha 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 so with intonation you can change the meaning but these things cannot be reflected in the written language so written language has punctuation comma uh, we have a semicolon full stop and so on speech is produced quickly and easily this may result in many ungrammatical constructions but rarely do they cause miscommunication why because if there is a misunderstanding it can be easily corrected but once you have written something then it's very difficult to actually uh, almost impossible to correct it once miscommunication or misunderstanding happens because the writer and the reader are not located in the same place writing is much more deliberate requiring planning and editing and thus taking much more time to produce we can define writing as the use of graphic marks to represent specific linguistic utterances writing is not language but it does represent language which is a complex system residing in our brain so we defined writing as the graphic marks 
So every language you will see those languages which are written they use a number of letters of the alphabet if they are alphabetic. There are languages which are logographic that means or they are uh, syllabic. So a consonant and a vowel will be written together like uh, Chinese or you have uh, even uh, some letters in uh, Japanese, you have Cherokee. So they always have consonant and vowel coming together. There are logographic languages for example Chinese where the each, each letter or the each symbol represents one morpheme or a word. So for uh, that it is different system but Indian languages are mostly alphabetic and some are syllabic. That means they have like ka, kha, ga, so always there will be a consonant combined with a vowel. So some languages are like that. When we talk about language, sometimes we mean speech, spoken language, sometimes writing, that means written language. Of course, speech is spoken and heard, while writing is written and read. But there are many other differences which can be cited. Uh, and uh, this table that I am going to give you, the description, it is based on the research of William Bright. And the differences are as follows. Age. Speech goes back to human beginnings, perhaps a million years ago. Writing is relatively recent. However, it was first invented by the Sumerians in Mesopotamia around 3200 BC. Since then, the idea of writing has spread around the world and different writing systems have evolved in different parts of the world. Second is universality. Humans everywhere can speak. However, before the Sumerian invention, people were non-literate. Even now, there are many non-literate groups and many non-literate people in officially literate societies. So this is, uh, this, this is what we mean by this, is that everybody can speak, but not everyone writes. That is the universal feature. The next one is acquisition. The acquisition of the ability to read and write is quite different from learning to speak and understand speech. Understanding speech, speaking a, a, a language happens naturally, but for writing we have to learn it in some place, either at home or in school, then only we can read and write. Normally a considerable amount of explicit instruction is needed to acquire ability to read and write. People everywhere start speaking during the first two years of life. Many of the abilities involved are probably inborn rather than learned. Learning to write typically builds on learning to speak. So the written language as I mentioned in the beginning depends on the spoken language. Level of structure. Speech consists of two types of basic units, phonemes or units of sound which are themselves meaningless and they are combined into morphemes which are meaningful units. So the phonemes in English for example, s, k, u, l, they form the word school. So if you look at uh, this, you will see, so you have s, k, u and l and we pronounce it as school. This is the pronunciation and spelling is s, c, h, double, o, l, school. Next, uh, we have uh, some alphabetic scripts and uh, look at their structure. They also have almost all the alphabetic scripts will have a list of or a finite set of symbols, graphs, graphemes and they will combine to produce larger morphemes, words, phrases, etc. So Latin has A, B, H, K, L, you know A, B, C, D, E, F, G, H, etc. So written in capital letters and also in small letters. We have a script called Olchiki, Santali language is written in the, this script. So there, that is also alphabetic. You see they have A, K, Ma, E, Sa, Pa, Ra and they combine these meaningless elements to produce meaningful elements. These are the examples of uh, some other languages which are alphabetic. We have Assamese, Bengali, Devanagari which is used for writing Hindi, Maithili, Sanskrit, Konkani, Marathi and various other languages, Malayalam, we have Manipuri which uses the Maitai Mayak script, Tamil. Interdependence, most literate people can convey the same messages in either speech or writing, but speech typically conveys more explicit information than writing. Perso-Arabic script indicates consonants 
but often omits symbols for vowels. For example, if you look at the Urdu words, you will see, uh, so they have even Arabic language which uses the, Pers the Arabic script. So they will have consonants only, say ka, ta and ba. So they will have ka, they will have ta, they will have ba. Now they will insert vowels in uh, between say ka and ta, ta and ba and then produce many words. But the symbols for vowels are not written. This is true for Urdu also which uses the Persian Arabic script. So with ka, ta, ba you can create, so katab is to write, then with that you can create so usually these vowel signs are not written. So this is kutub, plural of book, that is books. You can add other vowel symbols and you can get, this is kitab, e, this is not written. It is used only in uh, children's uh, literature or uh, people when are, they are learning the Arabic script, that time only these are used, otherwise it is not used. So kitab, this is book. You can add maktab, see other consonants and vowels there and you can get a new word. So maktab, the, the vowel symbols ma, ka, which does not have a, maktab, a, it is not written there. So maktab is office, for example. So that is different. The spoken and written forms of a given language tend to correspond on more levels and may influence each other, as when through is spelled thru, through. Conversely, in speaking, in a spelling pronunciation, people may come to pronounce the t in often. See, often, it has to be pronounced as often, but those who uh, utter this word, they pr pronounce this word based on the spelling, they are not aware of it, so they will pronounce it as often, even though historically it had been lost. Retrievability, until the invention of magnetic recording speech could not be captured or preserved, except by fallible memories and by writing. But writing can be preserved for millennia. Its permanence has made possible such human institutions as libraries, histories, schedules, dictionaries, menus and what we generally call civilization. So this is what we mean by retrievability is that if unless you record your speech through some uh, magnetic uh, device, electronic device, you cannot retrieve it. The moment some sentences are uttered, they rapidly fade. You cannot recover it back. Once something is spoken, you cannot get it back. But if the language is written, then you can always go back to it. You can always preserve it. And as I said, that is why the uh, civilizations are possible. We have uh, histories written. We have libraries created, dictionaries, encyclopedias written. Literary use. Non-literate societies have traditions, songs, rituals, legends, myths composed orally and preserved by memory. Such text may be called oral literature. So that means the non-literate societies will have oral literature. Everything exists orally. But writing can be, uh, in contrast, writing permits what is more often called literature, bodies of text which are much larger and more codified than memory. Yet even in literate societies, dramatic performance and reading aloud remain important traditions. Next is prestige. Written language is associated with political and economic power, admired literature and educational institutions, all of which lend it high prestige, high prestige. In literate societies, people often come to think of their written language as basic. They may regard speech as inferior. So there are, because something is written, so language becomes visible. Otherwise spoken language is abstract. We do not see the sounds coming out and the words, we do not see them. So they are invisible. So that is why many societies, they think that if something is written, so that only is language. So if they have a grammar written, if they have a dictionary written, they have some story books written, then they think they have a language. And if they have a different script, uh, individual indigenous script, then also they think they have language and that is more prestigious. If it is only spoken, then they do not attach so much of prestige to the spoken language. Nevertheless, writing can be perceived as colder 
or more impersonal than speech. So when you write, it is considered as more cold, colder. So it has no emotions because it lacks emotions. But speech has uh, gestures, uh, body language, then it has tone, intonation. So it's more personal. That's why not so cold. A standardization. Spoken language has dialects or varieties, forms varying across geographical areas and social groups. But in societies that use writing, the needs of communication encourage moves towards a single written norm, codified by governmental, educational and literary institutions. The prestige of the written standard is then likely to influence speech as well. So as you are aware, uh, in your own state you must have seen that uh, you go from place to place, say 10 kilometer, 5 kilometer away from your place, you will hear the same language is spoken differently. For example, you take example of Hindi. So if you go to uh, uh, Bihar where Hindi is spoken, you will hear people not use ne, like instead of maine khana khaya, they will say hum khaye. So this is a variety, a different form of Hindi. It's not substandard or anything, but spoken differently. You go to another area, say you go to Punjab, you go to Haryana, you will find Hindi is spoken differently because Punjabi has tone. So if the Punjabi speakers use Hindi, then the some rudiments of uh, the uh, tone will be there in their Hindi speech. And uh, they have rules like uh, if the first sound uh, is uh, voiced aspirate like bha, it becomes voiceless, unaspirated. So bhai will be pronounced as pai. So what happens? That may reflect in their speech when they speak Hindi. You go to Bengal, when they speak Hindi, they will have pronunciation according to their habit. So Bengali does not have uh, three sirs, sa, sh, and sh. They have only one sh. So maybe in their speech you will find that all sirs are pronounced as sh. So they will say sub pronounced as shab. So there will be varieties in different areas where Hindi is spoken. And you must be familiar with uh, languages like Bengali has different varieties, Chatgaya, you will have uh, Borishal, you will have uh, Radhi, Barendri, you have Sileti. In Assamese, you have different varieties. As spoken in Kamrup is one. Barpeta area will have different varieties of Assamese. Tamil, will, you will have different varieties spoken in different districts. So spoken language will always have some varieties. So forms will vary across geographical areas and also in social groups. So a particular person belonging to a particular caste may speak a language differently. Okay? These things are possible. But when you write something, then all these forms, the varieties, they will write in a standard uh, norm. For example, Bengali as I mentioned, you have Sileti spoken in the South Assam. And you have the standard Bengali spoken in say Calcutta area of West Bengal. But these people who live in South Assam, they speak one variety of Bengali, but when they write in university, college, textbooks, anything, newspaper, written, then that is in a standard variety. The norm is that of the standard. So and that is considered to be prestigious. Next is formality. Communication may be formal or casual. So in literate societies, writing may be associated with formal style and speech with and speech with casual. So writing is formal and speech is casual. Formal and informal styles may be very distinct. For example, in Arabic there are two varieties. So when they, they use two different varieties of Arabic, formally and informally. Tamil also, you have high Tamil and low Tamil. So two are used in different situations, formally and informally. We also have, uh, as I gave already, the example of uh, Hindi. So uh, these people in say Bihar, UP, Uttarakhand, Haryana, Punjab, Bengal, Assam, they speak different varieties of Hindi. There will be variations. But when they use it formally, when you have to write a novel, you have to write in newspaper, if you have to produce something on TV, then different variety of Hindi will be used. Change. Spoken language everywhere and always undergoes continual change of which speakers may not be so aware. Written language because of its permanence and standardization shows less sweeping changes. The spelling of English is an example. 
So, it has not changed much in say 1500 years or 1800 years it does it did change but not so much. But the pronunciation has changed so much say between the choices time and the modern times. I will give you some examples here. Uh, you can see we write in English written English the words will be let us say you have words like fool, name just let us take two example or maybe you have five take one more house. Now look at uh, the pronunciation the old English pronunciations of these words. So actually fool this we pronounce it now fool but there was a time when it was pronounced as fool that is why we have double O it was O. We have house once upon a time it was pronounced as whose name this was pronounced as nam and nam. Then we have five this was pronounced as fever which became later feev and now we pronounced so fever fever we have come to feev and then five. So e became i five nama it became nam and then a changed to a name fool was fool it became fool then we have house this was pronounced as whose and then in modern English it became house. So see but spelling did not change how much the pronunciation has changed whose to house fool to fool nama or nam to name we have fever or fever to five but the written uh, norm convention did not change. This is true for Hindi and many other languages as well. You know that uh, the Indo-Aryan languages like Assamese, Bengali, Marathi, Gujarati, uh, Sindhi they have uh, borrowed so many words from Sanskrit the common stock they have but they write it differently. You must have uh, uh, heard some uh, Bengali friends speaking so they will write Lakshmi there will be four symbols la, ksh, ma and e but the pronunciation will be lokhi. Okay. Similarly in Hindi you see uh, if you have some exposure to Sanskrit you must be aware and uh, this is uh, what is uh, done in English we have yoga, 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 Rama, Krishna, Hanumana. So words ended in a uh, but when Hindi borrowed it and there was some change so in Hindi modern Hindi there is not even one word that ends in a. So you, you won't have griha you will have griha, ghar, kamala no, kamal, rama no, ram. So all words consonant ending uh, now they remain consonant ending earlier they had a. So this is quite common but the spelling does not change Hindi you must have observed has only two sh or sa. So one is dental sa as in sub, saat, saat and the other one is retro, uh, palatal sh. So you have vishesh okay, or koshish. So we have two sa's but see what happened when they borrowed words from Sanskrit. So Sanskrit had three different sa's. So dental sa, then we had palatal sh and retroflex sh. So sa, sarva, then we had sh as in Shiva, then the third one sh as in Vish or Dhanush. So but when Hindi borrowed these words what happened? They retained the retroflex sh in written form but it, the spoken form was lost. So that is why we get, so we will write uh, in Hindi you will see, so they will write Vish. But actually the, they are pronouncing it as if this is wish let us say or so what happened we had in Sanskrit sh, sh, but we kept it in writing but in spoken Hindi this sound is lost. Similarly in uh, many varieties of Hindi you will find we have ra, retroflex ra and we have na dental na but 
in many uh, varieties of Hindi or uh, people who are not so conscious about their Hindi, the difference is lost. So instead of na and na, they will say na and na. So gan will become gun. Now uh, let us talk about another important aspect. Generally people think that once you have a spoken language and you start writing it, then there is, there, so every language must have a separate script, but that is not true at all. There is no relationship, no intrinsic relationship, not necessary that every language must have a separate distinct script or writing system. And I have given example that it is possible that one language can be written in many languages and vice versa. Many languages can be written in one script and we have examples in uh, India. You uh, have languages of uh, Nagaland, Ao, Angami, Lotha, Fom, Arunachal uh, Pradesh languages, Mishmi, Mishing. Then we have uh, languages from Manipur, Paite, Mao, Maram, Kom. We have languages from Meghalaya, Khasi, Garo, Mizoram uh, language, Mizo, Sangtam again from Nagaland, Wancho from Arunachal Pradesh, Waifei from uh, Manipur, Zemi from Assam, Manipur uh, and also some western languages like Finnish and English, they all use the Roman script. So see, many languages but only one script, one orthography, only one writing system and the vice versa is also true. So there, uh, Santali we have one example in India. So they uh, once upon a time like uh, until let's say 100 years ago, Santali was written in Devanagari, Odia, Bengali and Roman. But when in the 20th century, uh, the script was uh, invented by uh, uh, one scholar called Raghunath Murmu, Old Chiki or Old Semeth. So when that script came and now there was a movement and people consciously tried to replace other scripts and use only Old Chiki. But still in Jharkhand, uh, Santali is written in Devanagari and partly in Odisha, Odi it is written in Odia script and Old Chiki in all the states. Now Sanskrit is very old and classical language that used to be written in various scripts. So in Bengal something was written in Sanskrit language. The sentences will be, the spoken form will be that of spoken Sanskrit. But when they wrote it, so it was written in Assamese script, Bengali script, Tamil Nadu Tamil script, Devanagari in many states and it was even written in Khmer, the language of Cambodia and many other uh, western scripts including Arabic also in uh, our uh, neighboring uh, countries. So it is not necessary that one language will have only one script or writing system as I gave you example. Then uh, it is not also necessary that every written uh, letter or symbol should represent one sound. So one sound, one letter or in the alphabet, it is not necessary. And we have so, so many examples in India where you can see even in western countries the languages spoken in other parts of uh, the world. So it is not necessary that the, every sound has to be represented in the writing system. I will give you quickly one example and it is not necessary if you think that if a language has fewer sounds and uh, fewer letters in the alphabet, they cannot express themselves, that is wrong. We have a very good example of Tamil in India which is very old, uh, as old as Sanskrit or maybe uh, older. So it has very few letters in the alphabet, but they uh, could manage to write uh, so much for centuries. So let us take this example from uh, Tamil. So now see, we have uh, in Tamil, you have pa and then see in Devanagari you must have seen, we have series of letters like ka, kha, ga, ga, na. Pa, pa, ba, ba, ma, ta, tha, da, dha, na, according to the places where they are articulated. So in Tamil, in written script, you will have pa and then ma in that series. You will have ka and then you have nga, okay, or without that also is okay. You will have ta and then you have na. There are two nas, so that is not necessary for us. Now, so see what is happening. So you will think that Tamil has no ba as if or Tamil has no ga, but that is not true. They have 
the rules for that. So you write with fewer number of uh, letters of the alphabet, but you can use it for every spoken uh, sound in your language. So uh, you might think that if there are fewer symbols in the orthography in written language, they are not capable of representing all the sounds in a language, but that is not true. The rules will tell the native speaker that which sound, which letter represents which sound and they can uh, work perfectly all right. As I was uh, going to give you example of Tamil, so you will have for example, in there, uh, so you will have ka and then you have na, okay. And then you have uh, say, uh, let us say pa, you have pa, then you have ma, you have ta and then you have na. So see, there is no tha or the here. But look at their writing, when they write words, what will happen? So, you will write say for example, this, this is for without concert, without vowel sound. So, now pa, a, ma, pa and u. So, a person who does not know Tamil will pronounce it as pampu, but a Tamil speaker will not pronounce it as pampu. So, they will pronounce it as pambu. So, this pa also represents ba. Similarly, you will have uh, say ta. So, if it comes or let us uh, say in, in the middle part between say voiced segments like vowels, between vowels or ma and a, uh, ma and u. So, ta will also represent the. So, what is happening? They have fewer letters, but they can work very well. And uh, look at another example from Urdu. And the vice versa is also true. What happens? Uh, sometimes a language will have more letters in the alphabet, more number of graphemes, but they do not represent individual sounds. English is a classic example. For, so, in English, for example, you know that gh can also be f, f, f can represent f. Similarly, we can have ti, say in nation, so we have tio, that is sh, ti is sh. In fish, we have s, h and that also is sh. So, many letters, but one sound. Uh, Urdu is uh, another good example. They borrowed words from Arabic and Persian. So, they borrowed the script also, the orthographic system. So, what happened? Arabic had different sirs. So, let us say you had sir, then Arabic, Persian Arabic strip, script also has sir and they had say another sir. Now, in many words in Urdu, you will find that these three letters are used, but the Urdu speakers will pronounce all three sounds as sir. So, if you have, so this is sub, then you can also have, let us say, so asar, sub is all, asar is effect and they will have, let us say, suba. Subha, morning. So, all, all these three letters are pronounced sa. So, there are many letters in uh, Persian Arabic uh, alphabet uh, where you will have za is another example. So, zor will have one kind of za and zulm will have atrocity, will have another kind of c. So, written form is za, za and za as in zor, strength or force and zulm in atrocity. So, two letters, but one sound in Urdu. So, this you have to keep in mind. Uh, I have given uh, another example. So, you will see that a person, as I already said in the beginning, that the writing represents spoken language. So, if even if you know a script, but if you do not know the language, you cannot understand the meaning of it. So, the example, this example says that thing only. So, these words have been borrowed from Sanskrit. So, like Shodash became Shola, Vishesh, Vish, Vinash and Nach. Now, see how they vary in different languages, Assamese, Bengali and Maithili. So, a person, if you are not familiar with these three languages, if you do not know these languages, but if you know these scripts, so you, will be, you will be mispronouncing it. So, in Assamese, for example, the word Sanskrit word Vishesh should is pronounced as Bikhech. But you will be pronouncing it because you do not know the language, Asmi's language, as Vishesh. Similarly, 
wish sanskrit word but in assamese it became be or in maithili it became bik so if you go by the written system then you will be mispronouncing it there will be miscommunication misunderstanding so the written language depends on the spoken language if you know a language how to speak it understand it and then if you learn the script then it's easier for you to understand uh, uh, the language you can even read it write it and so on so friends we learned in this lesson that there is no one to one correspondence between a language and a script so one language can be written in many languages uh, many scripts and many languages can be written in one script then it is not also necessary that there has to be one letter for one sound each sound cannot be represented by different letter in language and also the written language cannot represent many of the features of the spoken language like tone intonation these things cannot be represented in, in written language we'll talk about some other topic next time this is all for today thank you